we're running short of time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, throw two, three questions to all of y'all. Something which you know, something common which came out when all of y'all spoke. Some commonalities which I found in all your uh, talks. Uh, first address uh, to you, Lena. When you emphasized uh, your point about uh, preschools and you know how important it is to manage a, a preschool franchisees. Uh, one of the questions which came uh, to my mind, and I'm sure to a, uh, to a lot of people in the audience, was that there's this whole idea about standardization, whether it's standardization of practices, whether standardization of curriculum within your franchisees. How do you control that and manage that in an effective way so as to also allow localization and innovation not to be impeded within your franchisees? How does one do that? So it's um, what we send out as uh, instructional design is the bare minimum. So we are very clear in telling teachers that you know it's not uh, prescriptive, it's not restrictive. You can go way and beyond what's going on. It's just to get a minimum standard quality um, and minimum frameworks in place. Uh, the second part of the question is just change, just teamwork. I mean, uh, people have been, you know people have been with us for twenty four and a half out of the 25 years I've been in, in existence. So you can't kind of beat that kind of history where somebody completely understands the vision of what you want, how you want it implemented, um, you know, and goes out and does it. Okay, okay. thanks. Uh, a common question to all three of you, which is Maya, Amrita, and Ezit, is uh, uh, first to you, Maya, you know, do you think that addressing this uh, teacher crisis particularly in early childhood education, because in primary, secondary education, we do have some systems, though they don't work well, we do have some systems of teacher training, whereas in early childhood, we don't. Do you think it is a good idea that our local colleges and our universities run uh, departments of early childhood education and begin offering uh, structured programs to begin with? It's, I'm not saying that they may do it perfectly, but to begin with, do you think it's a good idea? I think it already, I think it already exists. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Ambedkar University has an early years, uh, you know, department. But they're very few. You're talking about Ambedkar then, University then and Mumbai perhaps has, Delhi University. Mumbai has, I think Nirmala Niketan runs it. Then there's the Indian Montessori Association that runs it in different cities. Uh, so there are exist, there are, oh, Institutions but how do we scale it up? My question is, how do we scale this up to address the challenge? Because 1.4 million Anganwadis, we need a qualified early childhood teacher in all of those. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think that's where the government has to step in because for Anganwadis, 1.4 and, and million. And the, like or Swati correctly Swati pointed out, them. these are all postgraduate courses. Yes. How do we begin training teachers they're not postgraduate courses mm -hmm. necessarily. For early years, typically, according to the government's regulations, you don't have to be... Yes, that's postgraduate. But typically, for early years, if, if you're looking at the Indian Montessori Association or any other nursery teachers training or uh, uh, you know, pre-primary teachers uh, certification courses, they usually, after grade 12, you can actually do that. Of course, many schools uh, prefer to take stu teachers who are graduates, so a lot of them have... have finish their undergraduate courses and then they, they've done. But if you're talking about scaling up, the government has to step in. You cannot look at scale in a country like India uh, in a, a, in an, uh, uh, you know, institution, uh, in a field like education without the government stepping in. Uh, Swati, do you think this Samagra Shiksha, which the new government has launched, where they want to take preschool to K-12, the whole preschool right up to class 12, as a holistic continuum, do you think this is going to help? Of course. I think uh, till now, uh, the government was only focusing from grade one onwards because of the uh, Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. With Samagra, what will happen is this dichotomy which is there that who's in charge of education because the Women and Child Development Ministry is not in charge of education. Correct. It's only in charge of health, nutrition and welfare. So but that's Unfortunately, why Anganwadis come under there. Yeah. So Anganwadis have a dual role. They have to look after welfare, nutrition and education. So that's what they are saying is that you look after welfare, nutrition and education. When it comes to education, 
under the Samagra Shikha Abhiyan, the children will now come under the education department. But the first thing which I wanted to say about the teacher training programs is, the government first has to start a proper uh, teacher training program for the early years. We have B.Ed., which is not for early years. Correct. So you have Correct. all the states having different programs for early years teachers, and each program is not recognized by the other state. So it's very important that first foremost, what the government needs to do, which is part of our 10-point resolutions that we are giving to the government, have a proper structured early childhood teacher training program, which is common pan India. Yeah. And also linked to all this is also spending. Yeah. Early childhood education right now per child spending is rupees 1,960 per child. So within that, you're supposed to give them nutrition, you're supposed to give them health checks. So there's I, nothing I left for education within it. Forget about teacher training. I want to add to what Swati said. I think she said an important point. There must be a pan-India sort of certification, which is what, I mean, I, I often say that even for regular uh, teacher training also, I think private institutes should be allowed to run a basic curriculum for preschool teacher training. And then it can be a pan-India national certification, early year certification examination, which can be a national examination. And if the institute is good, yeah. then uh, the students will do well. I mean, the trainees will do well in that certification exam. That's how it has to be. We have to open up teacher training, whether it's at the preschool level or at the primary and secondary level. Um, I, just, okay. I don't know the Indian context, so I don't want to speak out of turn, but... Uh, in the work in the UAE over the last 10 years, they, I think they faced a similar situation in terms of qualifications and quality 10 years ago uh, because the early childhood was under the child welfare sector and was not part of education. So now they've brought those two things together. But I think if you wait for teachers to be trained in a better um, university or college process, you, it's going to take a long time. So I'm not, I'm not saying this is the answer, but what they did was we developed an in-service professional development training course for, uh, for teacher assistants and teachers. And it was a compulsory 40 hours that everybody had to do and that was different private organisations bid for that to be the trainers and they had to be ratified in order to do so and over 12 months then three years uh, people were getting trained on site as well. So actually both are required. So uh, you will require both. The minute the government comes out with a course you will have to think about the teachers who are already in the business. So then for them, the in-service teacher training program, which is developed from that course, will have to be mandated. I think Amrita, you yeah. wanted to add. I just say that, you know, we need to have very clearly defined standards for early childhood as well as, uh, you know, later, because even the B.A. programs are compulsory. They are there, but um, unfortunately, we don't really see the effectiveness there. So we really need a national set of teacher standards recognized across, and then teachers, as she said, private players can get in and train, or they can learn through some sort of compulsory hours, as you just pointed out, but everybody sits through one exam that sits, sort of qualifies them or certifies them as a good early childhood educator. But unfortunately, I think what's happening is in India is the government wants to regulate everything. The fees, it wants to regulate uh, it, the, only, the only thing they don't want to help out is with these important things, which is teacher training, which is, you know, having age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate curriculums. So, well, let's, let's see what our enthusiastic delegates have to say. Any comments, any questions, opening the debate to the floor now. Yes. I think uh, uh, Mr. Goyal... Yeah. I have a very simple question, that this early childhood uh, ed is it an education, learning, if it is an education, it is informal or formal? Because these three things are very, very confusing and it is creating a lot of problems. Okay, so it is early childhood development which happens in a preschool, okay, and how it is supposed to be given is supposed to be given in a non-formal method. So when you use the word education, 
that is being twisted now in all these places and linked to learning to write and read. That is not the only education that they require. That will happen as part of their learning and development process. I think one of the speakers here spoke about, I think you spoke about Maria Montessori and uh, or uh, how, who spoke about it, that this child was not taught how to walk. Yeah. That it happened. If you study Maria Montessori's sensitive periods, that when a child is ready to walk, then if you give the child the necessary environment, the child will learn to walk. But if you start making a three-month-old walk, it's not going to walk. If it will walk when it is ready. So it's early childhood development and it's understanding which is put in form of activities in a preschool, which is called early childhood education. When we call it, thank you so much, when we call it preschool, we are actually preparing them only for school. And school readiness is what is killing the children in this country because we think school readiness is about how much my child can count, how much my child can read, and how much my child can write. I hate that word school readiness. You should be learning ready, not school ready. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hi, my name is Nancy, I'm from Delhi. Uh, coming to your teacher training discussion, don't you think it's a catch-22 situation where there is an expenditure involved with training the teachers, the consistency of the teachers, and then the amount and the seriousness that parents have for a preschool coming to what you said, they want school readiness and not learning readiness. So when parents are coming with certain expectations to the schools that, have, that are catering to the masses, they still, un they still don't take preschool seriously. Don't you think that is also more important, whether it is from the government side or from the school side? Or, uh, because I think all the schools, uh, all the heads here would agree that they're facing this problem when they deal with parents, why they're not able to maybe spend more on teacher training and take that as a burden on, upon themselves, then put it on the teachers how to go forward and how parents take them seriously so that they pay an X amount because that everything comes with an expenditure. So how before do you address I give it that? to Maya, I'm going to say one thing. Don't teach the masses, teach people. Teach people, there's a difference in that. Education. Number two, if you're an educator, you must be able to educate parents about the pros and cons. Yeah. There are many of us successful franchisees sitting here our only training to franchisees is how to talk and convince a parent. And that is where teacher training comes. A teacher is not able to explain to a parent today why water play in the class, why sand play in the class. A teacher during open house tells the parent, aapka bachcha masti karta hai. Look at the dichotomy in that sentence, bachcha masti. Huh? Imagine. So she's not able to put forth, it's like a doctor telling you you have fever and then doesn't give you any medicine. So it's very important, this is where teacher training comes. If you had good teachers, you, those teachers would be doing your job of convincing the parents. That is very important. Um, I think you've said it very well, but I just want to respond because I, I don't think I un understood your question. Is your concern that if, uh, if school managements are spending money on teacher, on teacher training, training uh, are parents, parents going to be... They're not willing to pay for it. That's okay, I, I think that's... Uh, well, you can't expect the teacher, parents to pay for the teacher training. That's up to the school managements to budget. No, no, I don't mean the parents to pay for the... It, it's a cycle. Uh, teachers pay...